Well, hello there. Welcome to the Obi Thor Alliance. I'm Jacob. And I'm Luke. And in today's video, we're doing a brand new series, the top five of movies that came out in 1996 because I was born that year. If you like the sound of that, like and subscribe, comment down what your favorite movies were that year and stick around. <laughs> So as Jacob mentioned, we're doing a new series. We're going to work our way from 1996 to the current year, and we're going to rediscover all the movies that came out those years, and we're going to rank them based upon the ones that we've seen. And you know, obviously, the older videos is going to be a bit harder, especially 1996. Jacob was just born, and I was what four years old. So you know, our taste of movies were going to be a bit different then than they are now. So we're interesting to see how it evolves. So kicking off, you want to go first or you want me to go first? I can go first. Okay, so what do you got at number five? Number five for me was Dragonheart. Really loved growing up with this movie. It was probably my first action movie involving dragons and that sort of humans fighting dragons. And it is obviously outdated, but really loved growing up with it. The reason why it's not high is because the sequels kind of brought down the franchise, but the first one is the best one, and they probably should have stopped after the first one and just made the first one because the first one was epic. But as a studios and franchises do, they obviously want to make more money, and that's why they made sequels. Mm. So at number five, I've got Tin Cup, which is an iconic film for any golf fan. This is movie stars Kevin Costner. He is a known for being a really good golfer but never going on with his career and he just plays at a local driving range and gives lessons. He goes to see a psychologist. He falls in love with her and wants to impress her so he decides to he wants to qualify for the US Open which he does and this movie uh, it has lots of iconic scenes where for instance he is playing with someone and he gets angry and he breaks one club and the caddy goes, oh, well, you need that club. And he keeps breaking until eventually he has one club left in his bag and he plays the game of golf in it. He also, whilst in the US Open, he has to make this shot where he's got to hit the ball over the water. And he, he has no success and does, he hits it in the water. And instead of going up and taking the penalty at the water, he continues to hit it from the same spot and hitting ball after ball in the water because he won't let his ego go and eventually gets down to his last ball and if it goes in the water that's it he's out of the tournament and he ultimately loses the US Open because of his stupidity but in the end he achieves greatness by making the shot so it's a great golf movie highly recommend it for sports fans but particularly golf fans another golf movie and that's Happy Gilmore with Adam Sound this is such an iconic movie for a lot of reasons for the iconic scene with Adam Sandler's get in that hole with the ball and just such an iconic movie with how the comedy is and such a good movie for sports fans and especially for people that love golf and such a prime movie in Adam Sandler's prime of his career and definitely one of the best movies of the year. Mm. So at number four, I've got Jingle All The Way. Uh, if you watch a lot of our videos, you'd know that I'm a huge fan of this movie and of Christmas movies in general. Arnold Schwarzenegger stars in this. This movie brings back a lot of nostalgia for me, the whole hunting for a toy that's sold out and trying to get it on, um, on Christmas Eve. It's something that just doesn't happen anymore, but I remember as a kid wanting something, having to lay by it or go from store to store hoping that they would have it. And every time I watch this movie each year at Christmas, it just brings back those memories. So not necessarily the best movie, but for me, it brings back memories and I can't not include it in my list. For me, number three is Independence Day. It shows how humanity fights back against the A and threat. And it shows that Will Smith, mm. so Jeff Goldblum and Paul um, Billman, uh, such iconic scene he had um, about fighting back, back against the oppressors. Really good movie for its time. Unfortunately, the sequel let it, let it down with Will Smith not being in that one because he was in the Suicide Squads. But overall, such an iconic movie. The action scenes, everything about it was a really good movie and really would recommend seeing it and definitely worth its spot on the list. 
At number three, I've got Beavis and Butthead Do America. This is a, uh, it's got a kind of a cult following, so you've either seen it or you haven't. This is a movie that me and my friends really love. We can quote word for word. I've watched many, many times. It's um, just a classic, silly cartoon comedy, and it kind of paved the way for shows like uh, Family Guy and South Park. And yeah, I, if you haven't seen it, you probably won't, probably no point seeing, you won't love it, but if you have, you'll know what I mean when I say it's funny and why it's on the list, so. Beep somebody to do America. Number two for me, Fargo. This also is a TV show they made. The concept is, is that there's been murders going around and then normal people get caught up with it as well. Corruption, typical murder things. Really great movie that got inspiration from a TV show that actually doesn't follow the same concept. They're different storylines in the same universe. Excellent stuff with Fargo. One of the best movies of the year, but something else is number one. So at number two, I've got Scream. So this is where the franchise all started. The latest Scream movie came out this year. Scream is one of my favourite franchises, easily my favourite horror franchise. In this movie, it's the start of the Woodsboro murders. We get introduced to the iconic ghost face and using of the mask. In this movie, I'm not going to worry about spoilers because it came out in 1996, so I'd say you've probably seen it. We have um, Billy Loomis and, can't think of his name, not iconic, another character that basically team up, put on the mask, kill people in their, their neighbourhood, mainly their friends, and then their plot is that they are then going to stab each other and be the only remaining survivors and get away with their crimes and become famous from it. And then this sparks this ongoing trend that happens throughout all the movies where basically people are recreating the same thing they did. And, you know, in terms of a slasher, it's probably, you know, it's not overly scary. It doesn't have lots of jump scares, but it's just entertaining throughout. And I think it's better than a lot of silly you know, horror films where you're like, that wouldn't happen, that's unrealistic. I don't think that's the case with Scream, and I don't think that the killer's ever so powerful, you go, well, he would have died from that. Scream, it's always new killers, and it's usually two or three people wearing the marks, so it can justify how they can do the things they do. Very good choice. My number one is such iconic franchise. The seventh movie is out at the moment. Tom Cruise's Mission Impossible 1. Tom Cruise was really young at this point and he's still doing an amazing job with the stunts. The first Mission Impossible obviously doesn't have as good CGI or things like that, but personally I really enjoyed the storyline. Everything to do with Mission Mission Impossible 1 really set set off the franchise to bigger and better things and I think this was the catalyst for how Mission Impossible is now. I think it's gotten better with every single movie. Really hot really pumped to see the next Mission Impossible when it when it when I do see it and hopefully you enjoy it too. That's my full list. So that leads me to my number one. I've gone with Happy Gilmore, as Jacob's so. already mentioned. Uh, one massive golf fan, huge sports fan, and Adam Sandler, even though people might think this is weird, he's my favourite actor of all time. He's not necessarily that he's a great actor. I just like his films. He's very funny. He's very creative, and he just continues to bring out things I like, even in recent years. So Happy Gilmore is the, you know, the top echelon of Adam Sandler movies for me. Very, very quotable family friendly, laughable, and I even think if you have no interest in golf, there's still something to like in this movie because it's not really about golf and it's golf to a silly level. So it's, you know, it's applicable for everyone. So happy Gilmore number one. Any honourable mentions for you, Jacob? Uh, Romeo and Juliet, I did enjoy, but I think it's very cheesy, very dialogue driven. It is based of Shakespeare, so not everyone likes his sort of that style of acting and also 101 Dalmatians I think would have made the list but for me I don't think it was as high it probably would have came in uh six and yeah those ones 
Mm, I agree with that. 101 Dalmatians pretty much kicked off the Disney live action well before its time. Mm. Uh, now that's just a common thing for Disney to make live action films of their animated series. I also agree with Jomi Romeo plus Juliet. You know, um, Leonardo DiCaprio, very, very young in this, did mm. a great role. Interesting twist on taking Shakespeare and trying to turn into a kind movie? of like gangster and they've got guns and you know, but the soundtrack is what made that movie great. You know, it has such a great soundtrack in it. Two that I'd add to that list would be Train Spotting with Hugh McGregor in it about you know, heroin addiction in uh, Scotland, and then I'd add Sleepers, both re probably better movies than the ones that are in my top five. But I just don't remember them as much, you know. I've only, I seen, I've only seen them once or twice, and because of when they came out, you know, it's not really my era where the comedies, you know, the remain classics are much easier to watch. So, but yeah, Sleepers and uh, Train Spotting, two very iconic movies from 1996, which I'm sure other people would have in their list. Well, thank you for watching. Comment down below your top five. Be very curious to know. See you for the next top five in 1997. Like and subscribe and see you next time. Bye-bye.